I heard you moved out of Chicago. Yeah, somewhat. I'm still, you know, I'm still Chicago based. My mom there and everything. I still got a place in Chicago, but I ain't been home in months, bro. You know, so I, I got, I'm about to get a, uh, another place in Atlanta. I'm gonna be there so I can just work. You know, so like I said, I got my artist smoke. You know, so we gonna work, do our shit. I'm still working with Southside. We about to drop Swervo right after Humble Beast. Me and Baby gonna drop No Limitations. I still got, you know what I'm saying? 150 Dream Team, a compilation tape or album have. I'm gonna do that. That's still in the pipeline. You know what I'm saying? I got artists that I'm just about to just go 100%, 110% with. So I'm just working, man. Chicago too negative. It's too polluted right now. I don't want to be around nothing negative. None of that shit is too crazy in Chicago. So I'll just be trying to stay away, bro. I definitely, yeah. So you could say I, I moved out of Chicago for now, you know what I'm saying? Of course I'll be back, back and forth, but ain't no telling. Nobody might not even know when I'm in Chicago. You got to get up with me. <laughs> yeah, I mean, as you should, because I just interviewed King Louie not too long ago. And, you know, he came really, really close to losing his life last time. Shit, I got shot in my the one in my head that went through my ear. I ain't getting just shot in my, that motherfucker was in my head. And then I got shot in my back, my rib, and I got shot in my arm a few times, like, Okay. Did, your, time. did your ribs break? Uh, I think a couple of them did. Like, okay. it was, was cracking shit. How, how, many, how many other shots hit your car that didn't actually hit you? I didn't count, I don't know. But, but it was uh, there was other shots fired? Yeah, it was a lot more shots fired, I believe. I don't really recall, like, how many hit the car. I know seven of them motherfuckers hit me. Yeah, hitting the air right in front of his crib, you know what I'm saying? So if you ain't safe coming out the house, where the hell are you safe at? It's crazy. Anything can happen at any moment. You got to believe. That's why I think I'm still alive today, because every time I leave out the house, I feel like somebody trying to kill me. And you got to have that mindset when you're leaving out the house, like in Chicago. You got to feel like your life is at stake 24-7. Like when you're in Chicago... I'm in gladiator mode, and I don't need to be like that, you know what I'm saying? I'm an artist, you know, I got to think positive, think clear. I can't be thinking about trying to kill nobody or somebody trying to kill me, you know what I'm saying? When I'm in Chicago, that's my mindset. I feel like somebody trying to hurt me at all times, you know, so I don't want to think like that. I want to be able to walk down the street comfortably, you know what I'm saying? So Chicago ain't well, the place to be. Well, you had posted on Instagram, it was like a list of like the most dangerous cities yeah. in, the, in the U.S., Chicago was number 16. And and I looked at the numbers and like New Orleans has three times as many murders per per person. Yeah, that's because New Orleans is smaller, bro. It's a small city, you know what I'm saying? So no, 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 but, like but it, it takes same. into account for that. It's yeah. like it's per 100,000 residents right. how many people have gotten killed. Yeah. So even if it's smaller, it accounts for that number. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah, So I, I get what you're saying, like per 100,000 residents, it may be... 200,000, 300. I think the population in New Orleans, because I'm there all the time, my people that the population in New Orleans is a couple hundred thousand. Chicago is the third biggest city. We got millions of people. All the killing is coming from one area. So it's only okay. a couple hundred thousand people in those areas. You get what I'm saying? Like it's not killing up north and certain areas. Like it's people might get killed every now and then, but I'm talking about nonstop, constant killing is going on within. Two neighborhoods, South Side, East Side, really, that's it. You know what I'm saying? That's about it. And that's the same uh, population as New Orleans, maybe two, three hundred thousand people in that area. And that's where all the killing coming from. So it's literally the exact same. Yeah, no, I see what you're saying. If you compare New Orleans to like South Side, to the South Side, probably it's the get, same yeah. size. It's the exact same size. And that's where all the killing going on, South Side and East Side. So all the killing going on it. Well, you talked about in an interview that. You saw your first murder at eight years old? Yeah. Like, yeah, I was like eight. I was with my mom, too. I, was, I wasn't just randomly outside. I was with my mom. Okay. What was it like to be that young and just see a body sprawled out in front of you? I don't know. I, it, it, I was thinking about it for like some weeks. It took me a little minute to get over it. You know what I'm saying? I, can, I ain't going to say I just, it, I was immune to it. Like, at that age, it had me tripping, like I was scared, you know what I'm saying? Like, it, I was traumatized actually because my mama had to dive on the floor, her hand was bleeding and shit, you know? So that type of shit just fucked me up at an early age, you know what I'm saying? Like we was moving and some guys was like in front of my aunt crib. Um, 
just talking and shit. I guess they just got done fighting or something crazy, and the guy just walked up and just shot the whole crowd up. Hit somebody in the head. He was like literally just slumped over on the gate directly in front of my auntie crib. Like we coming out the door, the gate is right to the right. And he just slumped over hanging over the gate, you know what I'm saying? So they was shooting and we helping our move. So we by the car now. And it's just shooting, you know, we don't really we know where it's coming from, but we we young. I'm young, so my mom, she a woman, she's scared. My father wasn't there at the time. She she jumped on the ground, you know what I mean, cut her hand like on the building or something. So just me seeing my mama bleed, I started crying instantly because I ain't know if she was hurt or what, you know. So just at that age, I was thinking about it for for weeks, you know what I'm saying. It was probably like, and we was moving late at night, so it was like probably 2 in the morning or some shit like that, you know what I'm saying. I'm with my mom, though, so I don't know. It was crazy. Well, I think what's important in this story, and, you know, uh, I interviewed uh, this guy named Shaka Senghor. Uh, he he went to prison for murder and you know got out and wrote a best-selling book. You know was on Oprah and everything. But when he got when he got shot himself for the first time in Detroit, they basically said how. You know they they patched him up and threw him back in the same area where he got shot. My friend who had got shot the prior year, he ended up taking me to the hospital, dropped me off. They basically pulled two bullets out my leg, left one in my foot patched me up, and literally within a couple of days, I was right back on the block. If uh, an eight-year-old white kid in the suburbs saw what you saw, he would be in therapy for the next year or two, talking about his issues, working through them, and so forth. But when you went through it, I assume you didn't do any therapy. Of course not. <laughs> yeah. No, nah, we ain't you see, had no You see what I'm saying? So, so you never quite dealt with the trauma involved in about that. It, like, Ain't nobody, you know, it was just normal, you know what I'm saying? Of course, we was traumatized by it, but after that, I started seeing people get killed and shot all the time. Like, I ain't gonna lie, maybe it was like a movie, because once that happened, it was, I'm walking home from school, somebody getting shot. Like, it was just happening after that. Like, maybe that was just the beginning of a long, I don't know, like, everything happened for a reason, you know what I'm saying? So maybe God just put that in my life early, so... I could understand what it is and take it for what it is and just move on from it what, by the time I'm at this point, you know what I'm saying? But no, nah, it was never no therapy or nothing like that. Like, my sister saw people get shot when she was six, seven years old, you know what I'm saying? So, mm, just coming home from school. Yeah. Well, you got shot in the foot. Yeah, I got shot too. I got shot in the foot before. And it, that, no, nah, that shit. Okay. Well, nothing. you almost got shot in the head. One about nothing. Yeah, the bullet went like through my head. Like I had my head on like on some Swiss beats type <laughs> shit, and the bullet like went through my head, like through the top of my hat. You know what I'm saying? And so you took your head. hat off, or I guess the hat flew off. I no, guess the hat flew off. If if I had my head on like this, I probably would got shot in the head, or it might have flew past. I don't know how. It was just God, I guess. Like I had it on on some random shit. Just tripping like this, you know what I'm saying? It literally just knocked my hat right off my head. You know, maybe it hit the top. I had a bullet hole on top of my I thought I got shot in the head because my head was hot. I felt like the heat from the bullet on top of my head, so I was scared, you know? I'm just thinking, like, don't fall. You know, I'm thinking I'm hitting the head. I'm just like, don't fall. If you fall, they're going to kill you, you know? But I was already hitting the foot. I ain't know I was hit. So I just was running, and when I stopped, my shit started burning like crazy. <laughs> so I ain't, I ain't know. So, so you're talking about one to two inches over the top of your head. Yeah, at least one, like literally one to two inches. I felt the heat on my head, so I thought I was shot. It was, as I'm running, I still feel heat, like not just a second. Like I felt the heat on my head for like 40 seconds, so I thought I was shot. You know what I'm saying? By the time I'm running and I'm still, you know what I'm saying, down the block, the shot's still going off, though. Like the shot's going off for like two minutes. Two, three minutes, like literally, the, when I'm running, I'm away from the scene and the shot's still going off. You know what I'm saying? Like, a lot of my homies got hit that day. Like, they shot like eight of us. So, afterwards, you're holding your hat with a bullet hole in it. I didn't hold your my hat. My hat dropped. It was on the floor. I didn't, I had, was holding my head. It was hot. Like, that hat was no, gone. I no, but I mean, but afterwards, you went to go pick up your hat. Yeah, I, I went and got And, and I you're saw looking the hat, at the bullet man. hole. Do you still have that hat? Mm, no. Matter no. of fact, Literally, I didn't even go back and get the hat. A guy from the neighborhood grabbed my hat, 
and was weighing my head around. Like when, and I saw him, I grabbed my shit like, dude, what the fuck you got in my hat? There was a bullet hole in it. Like he still was wearing a hat with a bullet hole in it and everything, like wearing it through the hood, wearing my hat. I'm letting him wear it for a couple of days. I'm like, bro, that's my hat. I ain't never say nothing. But I just randomly see him one day. I'm like, bro, get my fucking hat. You know what I'm saying? Take my hat off. You feel me? You got my hat on. I always even pick somebody's head up off the ground. That, you know what I'm saying? Got bullet hole in it. So I see it, and there was a bullet hole in it, but I, my, head, my head was hot. I ain't think twice about it, because I was shot, you know? And I saw one shot in the head, so I ain't really care. You know, I wasn't even thinking about the hat, you feel me? So. But when, when afterwards, when you get the hat, and you're looking at this bullet hole, yeah. what, how, how, did that, how did that really <laughs> affect you, to, to see how close you came from not being here? I just, I don't know, man. I know I'm blessed, you know what I'm saying? And really, like, it was close range. Like, I'm, I'm seeing it. They up and they was pointing a gun at me. Like it wasn't randomly. They was trying to shoot me. You feel me? So they was close up. Like I don't know how I only got hit in the foot. Like I could have been hit anywhere else. Like I don't know how a bullet went from here and then I got hit down here. You get what I'm saying? Like I don't know. That's just God. You know? Like I really, God really is. God works. God is real. You know what I'm saying? He works in mysterious ways. I just feel like I'm destined. I'm meant to be here. You know what I'm saying? So. I just took it for that. I'm blessed, you know, and I just, I don't know. I was still in the streets, though. I ain't going to lie. Like, still shot, crutch on. I'm still on the block every day. Like, it never happened, you know what I'm saying? But I always understood I was blessed, you know. Of course, I ain't never take it for granted. I knew for a fact it was meant for me not to get shot in the head, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know. Like, well, what, it was, was a sign, I guess. Did, just the guy a just sign. had bad aim? Uh, maybe they had bad aim, but... God made them have bad aim that day, you know what I'm saying? People got bad aim all the time that kill people. Like, it ain't good aim. Bullets don't have no name on them. They just flying. So it ain't good aim. It ain't bad aim. It's just shooting. People could be shooting in the L. You could shoot this way, and it randomly hit a nigga in the head down the street three blocks down because bullets maneuver. They move. Well, after that happened, and once again, no, no therapy after the situation. No therapy. Right? Of course. <laughs> so... So you, you have this, where well, you get shot and, and you almost get killed yeah. at the same time. You, you come back out, out of the house. At this point, do you feel fear or do you feel anger? Mm, anger, probably not fear. You can't live in fear. I feel like if you live in fear, you giving them what they want. You know what I'm saying? Living in fear, that's how you die. You got to be fearless. You got to understand the situation you're in. You know what I'm saying? It's more so anger. It's more so I can't let this happen again. It's fear too, though. It's fear because you don't want to die. It's fear and anger. It's fear, not fear saying I'm going to be high and I'm going to duck this situation because I was still outside. I still put myself in a line of fire when I'm still shot the next day, days after. You know what I'm saying? Like, I was still doing the same thing I was doing that got me shot. I was still on the same block I got shot on, so... It wasn't fair, it was just accepting my situation. It's the life that I chose, you know what I'm saying? It's the life that chose me. This is who I am, this is the situation I'm in, and I gotta accept it, I gotta make the best of it for now. This is me, this is who I am, so it was just, that's yeah, just well, life, like literally, that's, that's life that's growing up in Chicago, bro. A lot of my homies get shot, and we back out here doing the same thing, you know what I'm saying? But. Certain situations, you got to understand, you can't be in the streets forever. You got to take it for what it is. You know what I'm saying? You can't do this forever. It's only a temporary game. You can't sell drugs forever. You can't be that $100,000, $300,000 dude in the hood trying to take orders. and You know what I'm saying? You can't do that forever. You know, so I it just, I'm guess, luckily I'm blessed to have gone through it early. I was 16 when I got shot, you know, so.